Hello everyone and welcome back to the coverage of the Magnus Invitational. We are continuing with game two of the semi-finals, Ding Liren versus Magnus Carlsen to see who will face Hikaru Nakamura in the finals of the Magnus Invitational. Uh, and this one is just, uh, well, it's just a great game. Uh, so without further ado, let's check it out. It's, it's an Italian game, so uh, a lot of crazy stuff, uh, but uh, we're gonna check it out either way. So e4, Magnus replies with e5, knight f3, knight to c6, and bishop to c4. Uh, so the Italian game is on the board, Magnus replies with bishop to c5, we have the Gioco Piano, and Ding now does not go for b4, unfortunately uh, he goes for castles first, uh, and knight to f6 uh, by Magnus. So just continuing with the Gioco Piano, uh, we have d3, uh, d6, and now c3. And Magnus mentioned that during the uh, Fabi versus Nakamura game that it's Nakamura who speaks better Italian. So let's see who speaks better Italian uh, between Ding and Magnus. Uh, we have h6, uh, rook to e1, and now uh, just castles. Magnus also goes h3, so they can go g4 from, uh, from the light square bishop, and rook to e8. So all standard stuff, knight bd2, going to f1 to g3, uh, and a6 now. And uh, there is one game where knight to f1 was immediately played. It's uh, from the 2014 Croatian Championship uh, between Ivan Saric and uh, Ante Berkic, the Saric won. Uh, but here we have uh, the immediate a4 binding, and it is as of move 10 that we have a completely new game. Uh, so uh, Magnus continues, bishop to e6, offers a trade of light square bishops, and Ding captures, and Magnus recaptures with the rook, not with the pawn, which would uh, improve your center, but uh, this way this way you don't ruin your pawn structure, and he's not worried about not being able to play d5 in the future. So b4 now, uh, some uh, 8 moves too late, uh, we have bishop back to a7, and now queen to c2, so developing the queen, uh, we have queen to d7 by Magnus, and now knight to f1, bringing the bishop over to e3 and uh, tra trading off black strong dark square bishop. And now, as it being allowed, it, Magnus opens up the position with d5. Uh, we have bishop to e3, uh, and bishop captures on e3. We have knight captures on e3, and now knight to e7, uh, shifting the knight over to g6. Uh, we have a5 by Ding, grabbing more space on the queen side. Uh, and now knight to g6 by Magnus, and the g3 now, not allowing the knight any jumps to g4, uh, to f4 or h4, and just rook to d8. So Magnus uh, uh, developing all of his pieces, and king to g2, Ding improves the position of his king. Uh, we have queen to c6 now, uh, putting more pressure on the e4 pawn, and now knight to f5 by Ding. And this is now a beautiful outpost for the knight, so of course Magnus wants to eliminate it. We have knight to e7, and, and here Ding just cat. Uh, captures. We have knight captures with check, rook captures, and now c4. So putting pressure on d5, now forcing Magnus to capture. We have d captures on e4, d captures on e4, and now uh, Magnus has to decide what to do here. Do, do you keep pressuring the e4 pawn or do you help out with the defense of the e5 pawn? So here Magnus goes queen back to e8, which will uh, which will keep the e5 pawn sufficiently defended. You 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 have the d file covered, and also this makes way for the c5 uh, thrust which Magnus is planning. So rook eight to d1, just uh, uh, countering Carlson's rook on the d file, and now Carlson goes for c5, a temporary pawn sacrifice, which if Ding accepts uh, will will basically ruin his pawn structure on the queen side and will have uh, well a, a lot of weaknesses. So there isn't a, a better move here, so Ding just goes for it, we have B captures on C5, and now you have a, a, an A5 pawn which could be weak, and these two double C pawns which are also uh, very weak, uh, and the rook uh, if, if, if loves anything it's doubled pawns. So rook to C8, uh, and now Ding says, okay, I'm going for the F5 square once again, knight to H4. And here he's asking uh, Carlsen, are you maybe interested in uh, further weakening, weakening your position with g6? Uh, but then you bring your rook to d6 and all of a sudden uh, black is not uh, feeling all that great. Uh, you, you might have some plans of going c5 in the, uh, c6 in the future uh, and so on. So instead we have rook captures on c5 by Magnus and just knight to f5 by Ding. So uh, an excellent square for the knight. We have rook to d7 and here uh, Ding trades. We have rook captures, queen captures and rook to d1. 
uh, grabbing hold of the d6 square. Magnus moves the queen, queen to c7, goes for the c4 pawn, uh, while also pressuring the a4, the a5 pawn, and now rook to d6 biding. And here Magnus has to take uh, take into account some ideas like maybe knight captures on h6, g captures, then rook captures knight, uh, and so on. But for the moment, just rook captures on c4. Magnus wins back his pawn, attacks Ding's queen, uh, and now it's uh, Magnus who is up a pawn. So queen to d3 by Ding, and here we reach uh, this amazing moment uh, from game two where Magnus took some five minutes uh, to, to dwell on the position. He has to consider a lot of things. Uh, for example, you cannot capture the pawn as the rook hangs. So what do you do with this? Do you have to... Do you still have to worry about knight captures on h6 followed by rook captures here? Uh, or do you play something else? So here, uh, one uh, reasonable course of action would be something like rook to c3, push the queen back, play queen c4, trade queens, and continue playing this game uh, with, with pretty much a, a drawish outcome. However, Magnus, after considering the position uh, for five minutes, decided to improve the position of his king, and he played king to h7, and we reached the position from the thumbnail. And now, uh, something is available in the position that was not available when the, when the king was on g8. So feel free to pause the video here and try to find this move uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting why it works now and why it didn't work with the king on g8. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, here Ding just played rook captures on f6. And uh, Magnus was like... Okay, he, he, he captured the rook and Ding just played queen to e3. And when Magnus saw queen to e3, he was disgusted. He was like, he, he couldn't believe it. He, he started, you know, with the hands and everything. And uh, uh, well, here he just resigned. There's nothing to do. Uh, <laughs> whatever you do, queen captures on h6, followed by queen to g7 is checkmate. Even if you try running away, still queen captures here is checkmate. Uh, and you cannot you cannot prevent this. When the king was on g8, this doesn't work because you can always shift your king over here. Your king is not on h7 being down a tempo. Uh, but here, uh, it, it just doesn't work. So after queen to e3, Magnus resigns and Ding is now leading the match, which leaves Carlsen two games of the Rapids uh, to, to get back into the match and uh, uh, either win the match or, or force, uh, force uh, bl blitz game mini matches. So we'll see what happens, uh, but yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it, but I'm I'm very sure Magnus didn't. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Kevin J. Levis, uh, Charles McDonald, Giacomo De Liberali, uh, John Hyde, and Nonstop Grind for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Magnus Invitational until it finishes. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your Saturday. And do join us in the Alicia Steam Arena. The links are in the description below. See you soon.